Okay. This has been my most requested video ever since I announced that I signed on a management team over a year ago. <sighs> so it looks like we have to go on a road trip. Okay, we're almost there. Hello! How's it going? Good! Hi! And we're black for you. Thank you. Is that you. okay? Yeah. I figured you guys would, so I was like, I'm gonna bring a little pop of color. Meet my managers. I am Ashley Fox, and here we I'm Jared. We are the, the duo behind Iconic Fox. We are also married, so we're a husband and wife team and we have a background in tech and digital advertising and really saw a need for this industry is about relationships and about connecting with people and we really are here to build stronger relationships and ultimately from a management perspective is here to free up our influencers time and we'll yeah. use influencer as just kind of the umbrella term today yes. yeah, yeah yeah even though that means creators influencers Instagram, YouTube, YouTubers, bloggers, TikTok, yeah. bloggers, whatever everything. you consider yourself. Yeah. You're falling into influencer yeah. Yeah. today. Just to make it easy. Yeah. So you guys as managers, what do you do? What the heck is a manager? That's Hit a good with question. That. Yeah. Why don't you go first? <laughs> so from our side of things, a manager really is that person that handles all the back end business side of things. So all of the negotiating, the contracts, the invoicing, the day-to-day -day communications that you shouldn't necessarily be spending your time doing. While yes. you can do it, is it the best use of your time? And so that's really what our job is to free up your time so that you can focus on connecting and creating. So yeah, is there anything that- No, I think that's great. I think a lot of it is also, which we're gonna get into, is more of like when and why somebody needs a manager. Yeah. So yeah. some of that kind of falls into like what we do. And I think yes. I'll make it a little clear about, okay, I understand now like why I would need a manager versus maybe I don't need one right now. Okay, let's just dive into it. Yeah. Why would someone need a manager? And even on my side of things, just to share my experience, when I first got started, I didn't know I needed a manager. Like mm -hmm. you guys ended up finding me because of a YouTube video where I shared, I'm getting too many emails, I wanna hire an assistant to help me set up these yep. brand deals, respond to emails, all this stuff. And they reached out and they were like, you don't need an assistant, you need a manager. <laughs> and I was like, I have no idea. Yeah, that's a great question. That's something that we get on our side of, there's so many moving parts behind your business that there, for anyone in any, you know, industry, whether it's influencing or anything, as you continue to grow your business, you eventually need to expand your team. So yeah. it was great thinking to be like, do I need an assistant? Or what else could be out there for me that mm -hmm. may be a better fit? Because from some of the people that we work with, they do have an assistant doing certain tasks. Yeah. And then they also have a management team. And then they also maybe have a photographer, a videographer. There are certain skill sets that at a certain point in your business, it's smart to start hiring out those things to ultimately, again, free up your time to focus yeah. on the things that you should be focused on. And there's nothing wrong with starting with an assistant. I mean, yeah. some people yeah. might need that just because they need very specific tasks to be done, right. but yeah. we're a little bit different where we're not replacing like an, an assistant type of role, but more yes. of the back end business aspects of working with brands, the sponsorships that we're doing or that the influencers are doing that we're kind of handling on the back end. So it's a little bit different right. than what an assistant would do. And like Ashley said, For sure. it's completely normal to have an assistant in some cases yeah. and a management team. If people don't know what managers do, I don't think people understand how much work you do. When it comes to my sponsorships, brand deals, collaborations, you guys are sending, I don't even wanna know how many emails <laughs> back and forth. And I yeah. personally, I hate emails. I've said that so many times. I hate it. Yeah. So if I don't yeah. have to respond to emails, if I don't have to, like they do the negotiating right. and figuring out the contract and stuff. Obviously I look over all of the contracts that I sign. Yes. Don't get me wrong there, but you guys help a ton with the whole setup process. Yes. And there's a lot that goes into it that I think people don't realize until it's on their plate and they're like, right. oh my gosh, I have all these 
emails to get back to. <laughs> it's a lot of planning. Yes. It's a lot of back and forth. And yeah. again, also we really are focused on building those long-term relationships and yeah. making sure that the partnerships that you're taking on, what they're asking for is also the right fit for you and yeah. what you want to put out there for your community. And again, there's a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of logistics on the back end that have to get figured out, even from how do we put this in in your content calendar, but pair it up with all of the organic content or all of the other potentially sponsored content that yeah. you have going on. So again, from that side of things, we're looking at it holistically and we're planning we are ensuring that it's intentional, like who you're teaming up with really makes yeah. sense for your brand and that we're not just taking things just because it's easy money or it's quick money. That's really not, that's not a good mindset. Yeah. Something else for me, because my YouTube channel, my brand, my content, it's a passion project for me. Yeah. Whenever I get something negative or like someone not willing to pay me what I'm worth or even just like some comments that I may not agree with or like mm -hmm. may hit me harder because it's so personalized to right. me. Almost right. having it come through you guys first is so incredibly beneficial because yeah. I'm not yeah. I'm not hurt. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, it's, and it takes that personal piece yeah. 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 And yeah. the brand's like not trying to hurt me at all. But yeah. right. you know, I'm just I have more of that emotional attachment compared to And you should, you right. guys. Yeah. yeah, and you should. Well, yeah. and that's a lot of like the types of people that we are working with from either a brand side or an agency, because we also work with agencies who, you know, manage other brands, uh, campaigns and influencer marketing. So there we're basically working directly with brands and agencies, those mm -hmm. people internally who are used to mm -hmm. working and negotiating and kind of communicating with other agencies or people like us. So, yeah. you know, if they are working directly with influencers, there is that perception it can that feel more personal. it can feel more personal. And so the influencers might think, don't say that you want me to reshoot things because yeah. I think, <laughs> I think it was, yeah. I think it looks great. Yes. Personal. So for us, it, mm -hmm. we take a little bit of that personal and emotional yeah. feeling yes. out of it and yeah. help move things along and streamline that. And I think the brands and the agencies, they kind of know that when they're working with a management team as opposed to like directly with an influencer. Right. Because it's just a little bit more of just business related kind of communication. Yes. Um, it's business. Yeah. It's not personal. It's, and yes. that's so it's true. Kind of, yes. It's so yeah. true. Yeah. But I do think that that's the, again, from our side of things, being able to see it from what other influencers are working on, what's going on in the industry, what is fair for what they're asking you guys to do yeah. is something that from, again, hiring someone internally as an assistant to manage these partnerships, they don't have the luxury of being able to see across other creators yeah. what's going on, other brands, other agencies. And even a lot of times we're dealing with similar types of brands or similar agencies or the same exact agency over and over. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of able to see, you know, who does what, who specializes in what, what are they offering? What are they asking for? Is this normal? Full transparency. <laughs> These guys do a lot for me and I love them and I appreciate them. All of the emails I can just imagine that you guys have to respond to and even like <laughs> I would say like vetting companies, yes. but like looking into brands, making sure that they're legit, making sure that like it's a good brand to align with all of that. Like they do a ton of work, but what I will say is not every influencer needs a manager or at least right. is not at the point where they need a manager. So just from my experience, I think it was around 30,000, 40,000 when you guys found me yes. on YouTube, 40,000 followers. And my channel was growing like crazy. I was getting a lot of emails every day that I just stopped responding to them. I was feeling really overwhelmed with how many brands were reaching out to me and were yeah. interested. And the few deals I tried to set up on my own just weren't, weren't great yeah. and it wasn't a pleasant experience for me. So I was at the point where my business had grown. I couldn't keep going the way I was going and you yeah. guys kind of came to me at the right time. But when do you think influencers need managers or like what is? Yeah. Well, I, there? I, I do think, and we'll both speak to this, but I do think that you've been in a unique situation where you've experienced some very unique, quick growth as opposed to others, especially sure. in the YouTube space. But that being said, I think we get this question a lot is, um, I want to join management because I want you guys to bring me more deals. And yes. while that will be part of the experience of joining a management team, because you mm -hmm. also join our network of relationships right. that we have built, mm -hmm. that's not necessarily the right mentality of why you should be joining 
management or why you should yes. be ready to join management. That actually is the opposite of why you may not be ready for yeah. joining management. A lot of people talk about how much money they make and you guys know I talk about how much money I make and when people say a good majority of their money comes from sponsorships, a lot of smaller creators think, oh, I need to dive into sponsorships, right. but they might not be at that point. And I get asked a lot, well, what is the set number of followers I need to have? Like, where do mm -hmm. I need to be? What is the benchmark? Right. And in my opinion, there's no certain benchmark, but yeah. I'm curious, like what, yeah. what are your guys' thoughts? Yeah. Your kind of situation was different for sure, like Ashley mentioned, within kind of the YouTube space and why we reached out. And I yeah. think for us, there's just sort of a natural feeling of, is this the right fit? Are they ready for management? When we are just vetting influencers and sort of reaching out to them or thinking that they're a good fit. And we kind of have, you know, influencers reaching out to us right. who are feeling like they're ready. And I think with you, you were a little bit, I'd say smaller than what we typically would be um, bringing on at first, yeah. but we knew that you just kind of what you were saying in terms of like you were inundated with emails, brands were reaching out. You didn't feel like you were negotiating the best way. And I think yeah. we kind of felt like it was a good time to talk. That is a great point. You're inundated with emails, not just here's free stuff, here are affiliate <laughs> programs to join, yes. but just truly, I want to run a full blown campaign where you're talking about my brand, my product yeah. line, and you're getting more and more of those real partnership requests. Yes. And you've also built up your audience that trusts you, trusts your recommendations, and has been seeing you share enough organically about your life, about brands you enjoy, about the things that you stand for. So you've built up a reputation. Yeah, yeah, for me it's not, <laughs> That's like with anything, there's not like a certain level where it's like, oh, I hit this and now I'm here and now I'm next up. You know, right. it's not like you're never going to fully make it. So yeah. exactly. I think a lot of people want the set, oh, you need to have a hundred thousand followers or something to get management. And it's, it's like, not true. it's not like that. Yeah. And I think some good key factors that you said were like when brands are reaching out to you, when it becomes too much, that's more so your trigger than exactly. like, oh, I hit this milestone. Now I dive into this. Exactly. Yeah. And you're feeling like it's kind of switching to a full time job exactly yeah because most of the influencers we work with it's a full-time yes. job for them this yes. isn't just something on the side that they just want to start working with brands they want help negotiating with brands a lot of times and this is what we talked about before we aren't really there to help you start your kind of kick off your own brand yourself but more yeah. of we are there to be an extension of your team and kind of help you up level up level and continue to elevate your brand yeah. yeah. So for me, it was like a stepping stone in my business. You know, like I exactly. had other income streams I had, and there's so many ways to make money, guys, like affiliate marketing, mm -hmm. ads on YouTube, you can have your own paid products, all of that. Sponsorships is not the first level yeah. that you're going to get into. Right. So let's talk a little bit about how we found each other. Like, yeah. so I get asked, how do people find managers? Yes. And I feel like I'm the worst example because <laughs> it was just like, it was totally the universe working its we magic. Found this guy. Yeah. yeah, 100%. And just to give you guys a little bit of a backstory, I already mentioned I was around like 30,000 followers mm -hmm. on YouTube and I was getting a lot of deals or I wasn't getting a lot of deals. I had brands reaching out to me with interest and these two ended up just like sliding into my inbox and it was at the point where I was barely checking my emails because yeah. I was just, I was getting too many and I was overwhelmed by it. And you guys, funny enough, sent me your link to your website yep. and then also some of your content. Yep. So I snooped on them. I did a little bit of stalking to make sure that Which they were should. legit people. And then we got on the phone and I think we talked like two or three times yes. just getting to know yeah. each other, asking questions, all of that. So. How yeah. does someone find a manager and like even questions to ask, I can share like my questions I asked you guys yeah. or what are your thoughts? Yeah. It kind of goes two ways. Like you were saying, you will have agencies or and management companies reaching out to yeah. you. Yeah. And that is one thing to keep in mind. You want to make sure that you're also vetting them and feeling like they're a good fit. Yes. And like they have your best yeah. interest in mind. Uh, so that's definitely, I'd say number one, mm -hmm. you will have agencies reaching out to you and, and yeah. you, you got to definitely vet them which we did, you know, yeah. that's why we had a conversation. If they're not willing to talk to you, yeah. that's probably the first sign. Yes. Yeah. How we find influencers, you can go into more detail, but it's, you know, again, it's kind of an art and science and we're not just looking at how many subscribers or followers yeah. you have. Right. So question, do you have a lot more people reaching out to you or do you guys reach out to influencers? It's both. 
Okay. It's both, and a lot of times, I will say on both sides, finding the right influencers and the influencers finding the right teams, it's word yeah. of mouth. A lot of this is word of mouth, just like social media and connecting and having relationships. So yeah. I will say from just a Google side of things, you can Google management teams, but the thing with that is a lot of times it will just bring up just the main top yeah, big, it's gonna bring big agencies. Right. So yeah. really digging down into like even um, hashtags on Instagram. And I know that this is a lot of like, you know, secret ops mission well, to, to, to try to dig into that information, but it yeah. really is to try to find the right teams. You can snoop guys. Like if you want to find out <laughs> who's merch company people are using, it's yeah. not that hard to actually find. You just yeah. need to know where to look. But what I was doing at one point, I took a look at some of the influencers that I like. And if you go in their description, their contact information, sometimes it will have their name at, and then their management group. Yeah, that is that a works. really good way. And even on, even on the Instagram side of things, since a lot of times you guys have a presence on multiple platforms, yeah. it's, you know, you can click the email button and yes. see it's the same thing that yeah. the influencers that are maybe in your niche or in that space, you can kind of do again, like you said, there are some ways around trying to figure out who represents. Yes. You. But at the same time, it, like if you guys are at the level and you reach out to them and you're taking my recommendation, it may not always be the best fit. Yeah. And that's right. one of the things I found with even merch companies that we were interviewing. Right. I wanted to talk to a certain merch company because I had heard of them working with other influencers. Yeah. And I personally didn't vibe with the person. Yeah. And that's, and that's just okay. who I am. Right. Yeah. Right. Interviewing process, when you get to the point, maybe you've found a management team you want to reach out to or a management team is reaching out to you, make sure that the vibe is good there. Yes. But also for me, this is just who I am. I'm such a business minded person. Yeah. But I got on the phone with you guys. I was like, okay, what are your goals? I'm like, right. what are you going to do with your business? Is this i I'm going to work with you for yeah. a year or is this is we're going to work together for that. a while? Right. Like I needed yeah. to make sure that we were in alignment with where both of us wanted what your to vision go is, yeah. and going along with the, the idea of what questions to be asking is yeah. you guys should feel comfortable asking what even the agreement that you're signing, because when you oh do gosh, sign yeah. with management, you do sign in most cases, you should be signing exclusively with them. Like you're fully represented with that team. And the reason yeah. being, there are m many reasons, but one of the biggest things for that team is they are managing brand relationships, contacts, um, negotiating, you know, all of the back end business side of things. So if you're working with multiple teams, then there may be overlapping exclusivity issues or usage yeah. rights issues or just weird stuff that happens with your content calendar. Like all of that, it just, it's a mess. So you really yeah. should be exclusively with a team for your own sanity and for theirs. But you shouldn't hesitate to ask, is there a trial period? Yeah. And that's something that we did together, mm -hmm. just to make sure that you vibe. And it's right for your business. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the other yeah. thing Well, too. and most contracts are like a year plus contracts. And it's like, I joked about this earlier, but like Taylor Swift, you know? Right. You don't want to get stuck in a contract that maybe in a couple months you actually don't vibe with a person. Exactly. Or like there's not the same values or something there that's yeah. not going to help you to do the things that you want to do in your business business, yeah. you know? So yeah, we did a couple month trial run to make sure that we liked each other. We yeah. vibed and then we ended up signing on a longer contract because yep. obviously we ended up vibing, but here we are. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to pop in because I know a question I asked you guys when we first started working together, I didn't have a management team. I didn't really know. And I feel like it's not talked about a lot. Like, yeah. How does the payment of managers work? Cause at the time you guys know, I've been very transparent. I was like $20,000 in the credit card debt. Mm -hmm. I wanted to hire an assistant, did not have the money to hire an assistant. Yeah. Like I was, I was making enough with my business to technically do it, but my priority was paying that off. So when I talked to you guys, obviously that was a question. How do you guys get paid? Yeah. Obviously it's going to differ between different types of agencies and yeah. management companies, right. the way they handle it. In general, we don't make money unless you're making money. So yeah. yes. we basically get a small percentage of yes. any, any brand deal, any paid sponsorship deal that we're managing. And essentially anything that comes in, since Catherine is exclusive with us, she's mm -hmm. not working with any other agencies. Yep. So we are working with all, all of her deals. So we get a, a small percentage of that. We don't like people to think of it as like, we're taking money away mm -hmm. from you, but no. really we're providing value. And so it's worth the small price that, that we're keeping yeah. um, to basically cover what we're doing for you as opposed to you paying a salary to someone. Yeah. yeah. And that was my mindset was you guys aren't making money if I'm not making money. Right. right. And I already had a profitable business before I added on this income stream. So it was like, I wasn't I know, losing yeah. money by hiring you guys on. I was right. making money already. So it just made sense and back right. to what you guys do. 
Like you are 100% worth the <laughs> percentage that you get, you know? Jared is like the finance guy payments from brands so like how does that work commission wise right. yeah. because i think that would be interesting for people yeah to know. for sure so in general the way we do it is all the invoicing and all the billing and payments go through us yes. and so that is another benefit that's kind of one of the pros of going with an agency is that we're handling all of the back end billing, yeah. invoicing. So when we get paid, we then will pay our influencers. So rather yes. than the influencer, if you're just doing it on your own, a lot of the times, and we've talked to influencers who are like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm forgetting to send invoices out. I'm forgetting to yeah. get paid. And then at the end of the year, you get a bunch of what are called 1099s <laughs> sent to you from all of the brands that paid you. So yeah. we handle all of that. So you guys, don't have to stress about it. For sure. So yeah. I don't like I don't even see the money that you guys get technically. I mean, obviously I know. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. know the full breakdown, but like I don't even see that money. I just get paid through them. Yeah. But at the same time, I have been a freelancer. I have had clients that I've done work for, sent bills to, and they've never paid me. Mm. Yeah. And tracking someone down and doing that it's a full -time is job. <laughs> absolutely not fun. Yeah. So you guys always do that. I mean, it's in yeah. the contract that brands have to pay and like all yeah. of that. But you guys do that, which is also so helpful and something off my plate that I don't Staying on top of it. need to worry yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, that's kind of another reason why, you know, we have special tools or special platforms that we use to really, you know, make it kind of streamlined as opposed yeah. to like right. some influencers are just using like Venmo or PayPal to get paid. And you know, that can be, CPA would yeah. cringe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you yeah. do have to be careful sure. with that. And sometimes they're taking fees from you. And so yeah. with, through us, right. we're not taking you know, any additional fees where yeah. you're getting your, your full the cut, cut. Yep. and that's just how we do it. Yeah. So since we're on the money topic, most asked question ever, how much do I charge? How much should brands be paying me? How do I know what I'm worth? All of that. This it's, is a video in its own. Uh, yeah, 100% yeah. we could break that out into something else. But what I will say guys, there's no like a flat rate. It's not like, oh, you have this many subscribers. This is how much you're charging. It's so much deeper than that. There was a time when even a couple of years ago, there were rates set on followers and engagement and that was it. And that's what you charge. Unfortunately, because there are services and platforms out there that we do not condone and we do not accept in our group, there are platforms and services to buy followers and buy engagement. So yes. you can't really just base it off of those raw numbers anymore because of the fact that what they're getting out of it, if they're getting people that don't actually care, it's just on the surface, this yeah. engagement, but it's not real engagement. Again, setting rates, there are plenty of resources out there to understand from just high level based on where you are with your subscribers, your followers, and mm -hmm. the level of engagement that you're getting, the number of comments that you're getting. There are plenty of resources out there where you can kind of have a ballpark range to start. But the way yeah. that we think of it is truly, and we keep saying this term, is an art and a science to it because every brand partner is different from, yeah. is this a one-time post or is this a long-term partnership? And yeah. what are they asking for? Are they asking for extreme exclusivity? Are they asking to use your content for a year plus or in full perpetuity forever? What are they asking for? So you really yeah. need to build that into your structure and then also the quality of your content. So your rate should increase as you increase the level of your content, the level of your community, and also you've gained some data and some insights from the types of conversions, the types of awareness that you're driving for brands, yeah. the type of impact that you're having so that you can also go back to your current partners and say, hey, this is what is happening for your brand from my side of things. This is what I'm doing for you. Yeah. So this is why I'm worth X amount more. I'm very much so a business mindset person. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went to college and majored in business. Like I started yeah. out in the digital marketing industry. Yeah. So for me, it's a ton of just like return on investment. Like right. I'm not doing sponsorships just because it's a way to increase my income. Right. Yeah. I'm doing sponsorships because there's something of value that I have that I can provide to companies that I align with. Mm -hmm. And I think Sometimes there's a loss in communication there where influencers are like, oh, sponsorships make you a ton of money. I just need to do sponsorships. But it's like, no, are you actually aligning yourself with companies that make sense for your audience? Like right. there's certain things that I couldn't advertise or have a sponsorship on my main channel because that's not the audience. Yes, I have the numbers here, mm -hmm. but like my audience is not going to convert for that. So you need to make sure that you actually have 
an engaged, loyal audience. And honestly, like build up a strong following before you ever do sponsorship. Share things that you love, yes. things that you actually use in your day-to-day -day life, whether it's on your Instagram stories, tag the companies, if it's on YouTube, Keep a like list because then when you pitch them, you can send them examples of how you've mentioned them, but yeah. Yeah. build that up first before you even dive into sponsorships and realize Thousand like percent. it's not just, oh, I'm over here, I've got this channel, I've got this audience. Yeah, yeah. it's a two-way street. 100%. Well, and I think too, we see brands are smarter now, technology is yes. better, and so mm. performance-based kind of marketing is really what they're looking at. So they're looking at the numbers at the end of the day. And the awareness and the type of content exactly yeah. so it's it's a whole yeah it's yeah. a holistic picture but mm -hmm. if you're only doing it for the money you have to think of it from the brand's yeah. perspective too is yes. what, what are they getting out of this are they going to see a long-term return for what they're yeah. paying you i do want to say one thing though is especially as you're getting started there are going to be brands or agencies out there that ask you to do free work we would really strongly encourage not just taking on a bunch of free work way that one of the people that we represent. She's like, you wouldn't go into a restaurant and say, I'm gonna try it out and like oh, pay yes. later, or pay next time if I like it, I'll come back. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. You should be at least getting fairly compensated to some extent for the work and the time and the creative energy that you're putting into creating something for that brand. Even if they want to test and run one video or one yeah. post, one story to start you should still be getting compensated for that to some extent. Yeah. And there are exceptions. Like if Sony is gonna come out and offer you a brand new full-blown setup, tech setup, and it's thousands of dollars. Like there are yes. exceptions. Yes, 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 yes. But in general, for us, we try to discourage this expectation of influencers, creators will just do free work to just test things out. Because yeah. oftentimes that doesn't lead to anything more than that, even though yeah. it's met with a kind of hope that it will. Two points to that. I get questions all the time about like, how do I just get PR? How do I get yeah. free stuff? Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, that's a perk to being an influencer, mm -hmm. I guess you can say. Like I, full transparency, I don't get a ton of free stuff. I yeah. barely get free stuff. But I think a lot of people see that on Instagram stories, like, oh, look at all the stuff I'm sent. So people right. want to get sent a lot of stuff. Yeah. And in some cases that is people's compensation, but yeah. if a brand is reaching out to you and they're only willing to send you like a $20 product or something. Just buy it, it yourself. It, it, yeah. If it you just, really yeah. want it. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. But another thing that was kind of brought up, uh, long-term partnerships. Yeah. And I know that's something we're really focused on. You guys saw I worked with Epidemic for all of 2020. They're a really good brand. I use them. I love their product. Yeah. Like I want to have a long-term partnership with them. Long-term partnerships are kind of like a great thing they that are. you guys are like really. Yeah, we're really driving. focused on. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. We're really <laughs> driving our focus <laughs> on. Like, that yeah, way. well we are. And again, from a management side of things, the way that we operate is we are really focused on building strong relationships. Again, yeah. making sure who you're working with is the right fit for you and your brand and your your personal brand and your vision for yeah. where you're headed. And that the brand partners that we're working with or agency partners are also on that same mindset. So again, setting the expectation from the beginning and communicating that really why you should be fostering long-term partnerships with these brands helping even from our side, helping educate the brands and even some of our agency partners on why that's important because rather than spreading out their budget across hundreds of influencers, if they just team up with even pair that down, teaming up with fewer but longer term, typically they're going to see a better investment and return on that oh, money sure. that yeah. they're investing in the people that are really well aligned to their brand, but also the type of community that they're reaching through that. I don't remember what the stat is, but people have to see things several times before yeah. like they even click on the ad or before yep. they actually like, hey, I'm gonna research this company. So if I have that partnership with Epidemic, if I mention it once, it may do okay, but the more I mention it, it builds up familiarity with my audience yeah. and it's more likely to be a better return on investment for the brand as well. So yeah. it's, it's yeah. really like a huge benefit and I am so incredibly picky with my sponsorships. Like <laughs> I've been working with you guys, <laughs> their faces. I've been working with you guys for over a year 
Yeah. I think we've done like four or five. Like yeah. I, I have not done that many, yeah. but to me, I would rather be aligned with the right companies right. that I truly love and use and that I'm going to bring value to them and they're also gonna bring value to me. Exactly. You know? So back to how to find a management team that you like, guys. Yeah. Make sure that you're really aligned on your values and what you wanna do with your brand. These guys don't force me to take a brand deal. They're never gonna force me to take a brand deal, you know? And that's something you need to vet yes. in the process. Yes. That's, that is honestly something good in the interview process of interviewing your management team, kind of going back yeah. to the questions to ask is, do I get a say in yeah. the types of partnerships or what I'm agreeing to? We never sign anyone up for anything that yeah. they have not fully said, yeah. yes, this is 100% what I want to do. Yeah. Well, I think that goes to show too that it may take a little bit longer to get into the kind of your vision, like the world that you want to be in as an influencer, where if you get a couple brand deals and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm quitting my full-time job <laughs> and I'm going full-time, you probably shouldn't be doing that. It takes a little bit of time because you are in a position yes. where you don't have to take every brand deal yeah. that comes your yeah. way. And if you are in that position or you're feeling like that, you probably need to reevaluate kind of what you're doing, but talked with lots of influencers who were working full time and doing this on the side. And over time it builds up and they, they really focus on a quality, authentic audience yeah. Content, that over time yeah. that will come, the brand deals will come yeah. as opposed mm -hmm. to feeling stressed and like you got to take any brand deal any, that comes yeah. your way. Yeah. 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 And that's something I think is so important is like the integrity of your brand, yeah. understanding why you're doing what you're doing, but also figuring out the moral values within yourself, but also your brand. Like I'm right. not going to take a brand deal just because of the money. I'm not going to take a brand deal that like I don't actually use the company that right. I don't love all of that stuff, which brings me to another point, brands, finding brands to work with. Another yeah. common question is like, do, not do I, do yeah. you guys reach out to brands? Do we reach out to brands? How does that work? Because yeah. I've mentioned in blogs before that like I was making a list of all the small companies and stuff that I've been liking and sending yeah. it over to you. It's two things. One, you have brands reaching out to you. Yeah. So that's step one. From our side of things, vetting the brands. We yes. love the brand branding side of things. We have a background in it and we stay in the know of you know what's going on, especially in different industries and in general, who you should be working with, who looks a little sketchy. Nine out of 10 times, the most impactful or best relationships that you'll just kick off right off the bat are going to be the ones that are coming directly to you or the ones that we have long-term relationships with because right. they're warm they're warm leads versus like a, a cold call yeah if you think of it like that where they're like who are you and what are you asking me for and we haven't planned the budget because at the end of the day you can't just go to a business and be like can you just spend this on me today they have a <laughs> protocol within their yeah. business to yeah. say if yeah. they have the budget for it mm -hmm. and if they've planned to spend that but yeah. then at the same time it really is just figuring out who, again, on our side of things, making sure that we're in lockstep. We know exactly like what even your content calendar looks like to see if you yeah. even have time. And yeah. YouTube is different than Instagram or TikTok where there is more real estate for being able to do more partnerships in certain spaces. Mm -hmm. But I would say in general for us, we're, we're looking at it from what you have coming up and what, what's going on in your life. Yeah. That's that another was, thing too. Right. That's a big thing. So, I like to think we're pretty close, but <laughs> we have a good yeah. relationship where my life hit the fan last year and I, you were like the second person I, like I didn't even yeah. tell my dad and I told you and I was like, hey, this is going on. We're like, Cancel we'll it. deal with it. I was like, just yeah. like anything we've got in the works, not happening. Yeah. Like I can't. And that was really big for me. And one of yeah. the things going back to like, you have to make sure that you vibe with your management yeah. team and that you right. like them and that it's a really good fit. Well, and that's a good um, kind of segue into how much we control your business. Oh yeah, I did get that question is how yeah. much, how much do my managers control? Yeah. Which is, we're not controlling your business. Yeah. Which yeah. is kind of comical to me. So yeah. I own everything in my business. I own all my content. These guys just help me with brand deals and setting all that up. We have a contract together that yeah. we've signed. We're not here to dictate what's, what you're going yeah. to take. And if you are with, or you're talking to a team that is saying you're not going to be part of communications, you are completely out of the loop. We will sign you up to what we think is good or what we're going. Yeah. To. That's, that's very different. And there are teams out there like that. But for us, it's, it really is again, this two way street between everyone of making sure that you're running your business. You are your business at the, the end yeah, of the day. Yeah. So we always want to make sure that what you're taking is the right 
even time in your life to take it. And that was one of my fears signing on a manager. I didn't want someone to screw me over. Mm -hmm. I didn't want someone to be yeah. wrecking my reputation yeah. and my yeah. brand or signing me up for things that I didn't align with. So yeah. when we first got started, I know I was a little bit closer and now I'm more so, Yeah. I trust you guys. Like we yeah. built up a relationship and I trust right. you. But that's another thing. I know we talked a little bit about like, it shouldn't be adding more work to you. Like you guys mm -hmm. should be freeing up work. But yeah. I did get someone asking me how often do we communicate and mm -hmm. how involved am mm -hmm. I in like the sponsorship process? It really depends on, you know, the type of agency that you're working with and you as a person, as an influencer, how yeah. much you want to talk to them at first. I mean, I would say on a daily basis that we're keeping in touch with the majority of people. Instagram is a little bit different than YouTube and the types yeah. of partnerships that we have running and how frequently that we should all be in touch. But in general, we're a phone call, a text yeah. away. We have our own kind of tools that we use to also keep things running smoothly from a communication just you know, campaign management side of things. Yeah. But in general, I would say your team that you sign with should be pretty easily accessible to mm -hmm. you. So that if you have questions on just really anything or anything comes up in the partnership, you have questions around or even just in your life in general, mm -hmm. just keeping in close contact to uh, make sure that everything runs smoothly. Yeah, it changes if there is a sponsorship that I have coming up that yeah. week and like the whole review process and approval exactly. and all of that, there's going to be more communication there. But yeah. just on average, like we talk every week, but it's not like I constantly need to be responding to your right. messages. It's no, not exactly. anything crazy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we try to make it again as from a management side of things as easy as possible. But again, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, they're all different yes. um, levels of communication, how much you need to be in contact. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have any other questions? We've been talking for so long. <laughs> I know. I feel like I know. we covered a lot. It's but... good though. This is something that is so useful to so many people. And yeah. again, you brought this up too. Of Even if you reach out to management or management reaches out to you and it just is for whatever reason, not the right timing or it's not the right fit, it doesn't mean it won't be in the future. So yeah. just don't feel like even from us, I think you're going to include in the description box if you wanted to reach mm -hmm. out, if you feel like you are in a you know pretty full time role as a creator and as an influencer and you're ready to take your business to that next level then we do have a form on our site to fill out at the end of the day it just needs to be the right fit for your business and yeah. it doesn't mean that just because right now it isn't doesn't mean it couldn't be in the future yeah. but in general we're super excited that you had us on yeah. and that yeah. you let us do this, this. Great. since i signed you guys on i was like i'm gonna have them on my channel i'm gonna have them on my channel <laughs> we've talked and about then them I forever just, yeah we yeah. haven't for so long and i was like okay i need like i need to do this because i get yeah. so many questions and i don't think that this information is really out there even when i signed Agreed. you guys on i wasn't mm -hmm. sure exactly what you guys would do for me or even like we talked about the payment like how the heck does that work yeah. are you my employees like yeah. what, what what is, is that? So I think that this was really helpful and awesome. valuable. And yeah, I'm, I definitely think so. I'm so excited. So yeah, I'll link to their website in the description bar down below. I hope you guys loved this backdrop because their house is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> and you guys know me, black and white everything. It's amazing. That's actually, I think, yeah. what we first approached you with. We're like, we oh, have you the same totally color scheme. did. That was your yeah. first email. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. We knew. It was amazing. Yeah. But, okay. Thanks, That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.